Welcome to the Gospel Attic Podcast. I'm Greg Bryan. And I'm Jim Resty. We're gospel addicts because we believe the gospel of Jesus isn't just good news, it's the best news ever. We're addicted to the gospel because it doesn't just start us out in the Christian life, it is the Christian life. Join us as we look at the Bible through the lens of the gospel. Thanks so much for listening. But then his tone changes. Right. Verses six and seven. You want to read that? Yeah. And I got the J.B. Phillips translation pulled up. I'll read. Let's go six through eight. I think is the next section. It says, I am amazed that you have so quickly transferred your allegiance from him who called you in the grace of Christ <clears throat> to another <clears throat> quote unquote gospel. Not, of course, that it is or ever could be another gospel. But there are obviously men who are upsetting your faith with the travesty of the gospel of Christ. Yet I say that if I or an angel from heaven were to preach to you any other gospel than the one you have heard, may he be damned. You have heard me say it before, and now I put it down in black and white. May anybody who preaches any other gospel than the one you have already heard be a damned soul. Does that make you think that I am now serving man's interests or God's? If I were trying to win human approval, I should never be Christ's servant. Wow. Yeah, what's your take on that? That's really something. Well, I think this is this is where you know he gets really per- it, he he takes us very personal and yeah. uh and he kind of you know, like I said, he gets right to the heart of the matter. The heart of the letter is this whole idea that you know um they are being deceived and not and, and they've drifted from the true gospel and yeah. uh and he even says like there really is no other gospel there's only one gospel that's right but but you you know you have drifted away and he, and he says even if an angel from heaven were to preach to you any other gospel than the one that that you heard from me may he be anathema or may he be damned right that is i mean that is such powerful language interesting that he says even if an angel even from an angel in heaven because i think the other people were probably giving them great credentials like oh is that paul paul who told you those things you know paul wasn't even a christian when christ you know walked the earth he was later and he persecuted the church so he doesn't have need of the credentials i have and i'm a much better person than paul and and Paul said, look, yeah, that's nice. Even if an angel gives you a different message, I don't care how wonderful these people were that told you this thing. If an angel tells you a different gospel, run away, right? It's not, it's not, it's not truth. He's so, so protective of the gospel. But I think he's saying the angel thing on purpose to say, you know, the stature or the status or perceived status of the people who told you this has nothing to do with it. Right? Yeah. I also think that, you know, he must have shared his testimony to the Galatians um, when he was founding the church and just, you know, getting to know the people. And he had a powerful testimony. I mean, he came, he encountered Christ himself. Right. Um, on the road to Damascus. And, and he, of all people, was like a Jew of all Jews. Like he was a Pharisee. He was, he, he was like a faultless um pharisee um you know and and that's why he was he, he was against you know christ and was trying to put christians you know uh, persecute them and put them to death and that's when when jesus appeared to him so he knew the power of the gospel i guess yeah. is my point yeah. yeah and his life was changed forever changed by the true gospel and and he just sees these people falling back into legalistic righteousness, which he was very, um, I mean, he lived that way. Yeah. Um, before yeah. he, before he met Christ, he, he was a legalistic Pharisee. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's, uh, absolutely. If you look at this, to me, he gives his personal testimony in Philippians three, right? He's saying, if anyone wants to rank themselves on a scale of one to 10, I was a 10, right? I did all these things. And then, um, but then he says they're all rubbish. I count them all rubbish. For them. They're all trash, you know. All, all, all my righteousness is, is filthy rags, 
It doesn't count, right. anything. It count at all as lost for the sake of knowing Christ, right? So, yeah, um, yeah and he, he's the guy who could have said, I, you know, if, if it's all about climbing the ladder, spiritual performance and righteousness, I've climbed it more than most any of you ever will. And it doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't count. Yeah, and actually, it. actually, the rest of chapter one, that he kind of, he kind of goes along those, those lines because he, chapter one is really just a personal, it's, it's his personal, um comments um yeah you know so he says in in verses 11 and 12 the gospel i preach to you is no human invention no man gave it to me no man taught it to me it came to me as a direct revelation from jesus christ so he's he's referring to his testimony there that he yeah. had an encounter with jesus himself yeah, yeah. it wasn't well, through an angel it wasn't through another man. It was, you know, so he understood the gospel. And then he goes into his past, you know, before, in before verse 13. That, oh, before, go ahead. Just on this, this idea of like, say, I had direct revelation of Jesus Christ, because there's a big distinction between like capital A apostles and little A apostles, right? So there could be little A apostles that start churches and plant this, that some sense in the people use that word. I think the Bible uses that word. People just are church planners. Yeah. They do think of an apostle. But there's only a there's only a limited number of capital A apostles, right? That Jesus chose and designated. And it was such a huge distinction of what we consider the canon of what was a, a scripture. Right. So and right. be written by someone who had direct contact with Jesus. Yeah. Not just later, someone else who came later thought, oh, I had some, I have some thoughts and impressions too, right? Now, I mean. You might say, I love the work of C.S. Lewis, and I love the work of Tim Keller, and I love John Piper. I read these books. They're so inspirational to me, you know, but they're not scripture. They're not scripture because they did not have direct contact with Jesus. And Paul asserts his authority here, you know, very clearly, like, you know, no man gave it to me. No man taught it to me. It came as a direct revelation from Jesus Christ. And by the way, could you imagine anyone saying that kind of thing today? Because now everything's just opinion, right? Oh, great. You could say anything. That's nice. And I could say something, write a thought down. You have, you have an opinion. I have, we all, I have an opinion too, right? And he's like, oh, no, this is, this is not me at all. You don't yeah. understand. This is revelation, not my idea. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a very good point there. Very good point. So, so, well, and so when he, you know, when he related with Peter and, and uh, the other apostles, you know, he saw Jesus in a different, he, he had, he had a direct connection to Jesus, but it was a different, um, a different experience than those guys had. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, so then he goes back into his past. He says in verse 13, for you have heard of my past career in the Jewish religion, how I persecuted the church of God with fanatical zeal. And in fact, did my best to destroy it. It was ahead. Of, I was ahead of most of my contemporaries in the Jewish religion and had greater enthusiasm for the old traditions. Mm -hmm. But when the time came for God, who had chosen me from the moment of my birth and then called me by his grace to reveal his son within me so that I might proclaim him to the non Jewish world, I did not, as as might have been expected, talk over the matter with any human being. I didn't even go to Jerusalem to meet with those who were God's messengers before me. No, I went away to Arabia and later came back to Damascus. It was not until three years later that I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and I only stayed with him for just for over a fortnight. I did not meet any of the other messengers except James, the Lord's brother. All this that I am telling you is, I assure you before God, the plain truth. Later, I visit the districts in Syria and Caesarea, but I st was still personally unknown to the churches of Judea. All they knew of me, in fact, was the saying the man who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they thank God for what happened to me. 
So he's he I guess he's laying down his credentials here, right? He's um he's trying to explain um um he's I guess reminding reminding them of his credentials mm -hmm. because these other teachers have probably somehow um obviously if they've been a if people have been um influenced by them he feels like he feels the need to 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 to, to remind them of his uh credentials but i love i love this verse i love that verse uh that last verse it has this testimony in like one sentence the man who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy that's a that's like a cool one sentence testimony yeah yeah 180 degree turnaround right yeah and, and paul's conversion is such a dramatic turnaround right someone who was zealously trying to keep all the law um and so he's you know so he's kind of saying the thing that they're telling you to do keep the law i have great experience in that because i try to do that and i was actually pretty good at it right and so i know all about that and then i met jesus completely at a 100 180 degree about faith uh about face changed completely and um and so i think it is i think you're right it's establishing his credentials but i'm not sure i'm so clear about it. i'd love to do more study on it maybe you have some thoughts on is so much of this in establishing his credentials is you know here's the here's the history i persecuted the church i met jesus on the road to damascus i changed completely and then he spends a couple of verses really drawing a distinction and a separation between him and, all, and the other Christian leadership, right? I didn't talk it over. I didn't, as it might be expected, talk over the matter with any human being. I didn't even go to Jerusalem to meet with them. I went away to Arabia instead. Or, instead, It wasn't until three years later I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. And even then, I just stayed with him a very short time. I didn't meet anyone else there except James, the Lord's brother. So he's really trying to say, and draw a distinction, between, and not a distinction, he's trying to draw a separation yeah. I wasn't part of that crowd. I wasn't in that crowd. Didn't run with that crowd. I wasn't talking to them about this a whole lot. And so what do you, what's your take? Why do you think he's doing that? Why is he separate? He's trying to say, I, I want you to know I became, I was converted, but then I didn't spend a lot of time with them or wasn't really influenced by them. What do you think? Yeah. My, my gut tells me that he's trying to make it clear because this is all about the gospel. Right. He's trying to make it clear to them that the gospel was given to him by Christ himself, that Christ himself presented the gospel to him. Not It wasn't through a human agency. It wasn't through the other apostles. He wasn't influenced by these other guys. He wasn't influenced by other men. Mm -hmm. He had direct revelation and, um, of, and so, um, that, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my thought. Uh, right now, but I I can look into that some more too. Yeah, honestly, right. I think I think you nailed it. I think it's exactly right. I mean, it's always going to do more study on it and, under, and understand what others have said about it. I think that's right because he's trying to say I what I'm telling you is the direct pipeline. I had it from the the direct pipeline, the direct revelation from Christ Himself. This is the right gospel message, right? It's not like I was one of the crowd and piece together some things I heard from Peter and some of the things I heard from James and I've heard from something John said and I got it all together and I have my own version of it right my impression of it and this is you know Paul's way of understanding it versus with just as much legitimacy or no more legitimacy than these other Judaizers or they're called Judaizers right that came later to influence the Galatians the, the other Christians that came and tried to lead the Galatians astray. Right. You know, Paul's saying, it's not like I have equal authority with them. I have my own take on the gospel, but like that authority of like, no, I had the direct pipe pipeline untarnished, uninfluenced by anybody. So here's another thought is, and you brought it up a little bit. The apostle Paul, when he first comes on the scene, he's kind of a scary character. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, imagine being the guy Ananias, who is the one who heals him of his blindness, right? And you know, God Argues tells you, that. "Hey, here's this guy. He 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 basically just helped put Stephen to death over here, the first Christian martyr. Right? He's coming for a, a he's coming for the Christians near you. 
Um, but I want you to go and touch his eyes and, and heal him. I mean, Paul was somewhat controversial. I mean, I think a lot of people probably questioned his, um, you know, uh, his conversion, you know, and his credentials. He yeah, probably was quite often questioned about this. And so it's very important for him. And, I, and and even in the book of Acts, you 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 um, learn his testimony, and it's very Luke does a great job of kind of um, you know explaining his whole testimony. I think that's Acts chapter nine. But then mm -hmm. Paul shares his testimony like in two other places in the book of Acts, and I'm guessing he shared his testimony a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, to make it clear to people that Jesus changed his life. Yeah. The gospel changed his life. Yeah. This is my yeah. This is my life completely changed, changed by him. But that's right. Yeah. So um well and then and, you know, there's something else. I, I gotta find this guy again. I, I hate to bring it up because I, I have to have research it, but I remember hearing years and years and years ago, I mean like 20 or 30 years ago in a Bible study that Paul, after he became a Christian, like went out in the wilderness, was just like spent time personally with Jesus alone. And I don't, I don't know if I can find that in the Bible. I mean, it says here, for example, he says, um, Paul's describing his conversion. This is, uh, I'm not sure what verse, is, verse it is. He says, I did not even go to Jerusalem to meet with those who are God's messengers before me. No, I went away to Arabia and later came back to Damascus. It was not until three years later that I went to Jerusalem. So he talks yeah. about like wandering off into the wilderness for a while. And I think it was someone... I don't know who got this idea. Some preacher or someone else had said, you know, what he did in the wilderness, he was, he was like doing direct Bible study with Jesus. Like he was being discipled by Jesus one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the desert for three years. I said, well, that's really cool. But I'm not sure he really says that. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say that here. And I don't know if I'd be able to find that anywhere else in scripture. That sounds like a good episode of uh, The Chosen. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's just creative license, you see. You yeah. know, that's yeah. what... Someone uh, when I was listening I to the, the chosen, said it, then I thought it was just it was creative license. Right? Yeah. So. By the way, I like the chosen. I'm it's growing on me. When I first saw it, I was I didn't like it because really? I wanted it to be more like just you know straight like straight from the Bible. Yeah. But the more I watch it, the more I like it because it 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 gives you that um, divine creativity of like and really does kind of give you a sense of what it might have been like for those yeah. those guys. It's it's not trying to be replace scripture. It's just trying to say, hey, you know, these were real people, and and you know, they had real conversations. Back to chapter one. Anything else stand out to you? No, I think that's it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Gospel Addict Podcast. Feel free to contact us via email at gospeladdictpodcast at gmail dot com. Stay tuned for our next episode and remember, on your worst days, you're never beyond the reach of God's grace. And on your best days, you're never beyond the need of God's grace. See you next time.